What's up, Covalence friends? Have you ever been developing your Node.js application, downloaded an NPM package, went to run it and got some monstrous error about ESM modules and whatnot? Well, today we're gonna show you essentially a little ESM shim hack that will allow you to run ESM modules in your common JS Node applications. Let's get right into it. All right, so we're starting off with our Express template and the link to this repo is in the description below, but again, you don't need to use this template. You could have any kind of repo that is running CommonJS. And in the case that you don't, or you can't actually migrate it to be ESM, uh, you would want to use something like this shim, right? So obviously if you can change the type to be module and then change over your whole project to be ESM, I would recommend that first and foremost. I actually have a video on how you would do that. But if it's a massive application already, that could be a real pain. And if you just aren't in the mood or you don't have the time or you just don't want to do it, then you could use something like this ESM shim. And it's especially good if you're only gonna ever be using a single common or a single ESM module in your common JS project. So we are gonna start here. And the first thing we're gonna do is we're actually gonna open up a terminal and we're gonna install a few packages that we're gonna be needing. So I've already NPM installed, but we are going to NPM I a package called ES build. And this ES build is what's gonna allow us to actually bundle up all of our ESM modules into something that the common JS can import um, or require, right? So we have ES build and then we're gonna install a couple packages that we're actually going to use for demonstration purposes. The first one of which is one called file hyphen type. So file type, and this is an actual module that only has ESM capability. So it, it is an actual ESM only module. Your application has to be ESM based or you can do something like what we're about to show you here. So we have file type and then let's also install Molter because we actually have to have something to run this file type on. So we're gonna npm i Molter and at type slash Molter since we're using TypeScript. And that should be everything we need from a package standpoint. So let's go ahead and kind of shrink that as much as possible so we can see what we can see here. And we are going to now pull up our routers and then our user routes right here. So our user routes are actually defined by, if we go to api.ts, just in case you're actually creating your own project or referencing your own, we have our slash API routes here, then we have slash v1, and then we have slash users, and that's what's actually in this user file here. So we have our default route here, and then we're also going to get rid of this one, and we're gonna create a slash avatar route and kind of get rid of this, because honestly, this is that route itself is pretty much useless. And now we're going to actually import our Molter and kind of create out for the demonstration purposes, you know, the function that we're actually going to be using. So let's import Molter from Molter. And we're going to define our upload variable, which is going to be Molter. And we're gonna be obviously just storing things locally. So we're gonna define a folder to do so. And that's going to be a folder called uploads. And now we can just kind of do our upload.single and we're going to reference a property called avatar. And we're also gonna convert this function to be async as well, since we're going to be using, uh, we're gonna be essentially grabbing a file that we're gonna be sending up from the front end and we're going to grab the file type using the file type uh, module. So what we can do is we can import file type from file type and file type actually has a function on it where we can actually say try catch and we'll log and you know if there is an error we'll log it just in case um, and then we'll actually also just check real quick if not request.file then we're just going to do a next new error and we're gonna say uh, avatar not found and we'll return um, otherwise, we want to actually grab the file type. So we'll say const type equals await, and it's going to be file type dot file type from file, and we're going to pass in request dot file dot path, and then we'll just log the type, see what it comes back with. And usually here is where you actually you know do something with you know do something with type and file. Let's just say uh, we're not going to do anything. We're just going to essentially uh, redirect back to the root. And this is just because we're gonna actually do a form submission. So this is gonna be a post form submission. We're gonna grab the avatar property or the you know the actual input with the name avatar. And we are going to just see it as a file. It's gonna be, Vulture's gonna convert it to request.file. And then we are going to be able to use that 
to grab the actual file type of this object, right? Now there's other, there's other functions in file type. You can grab it from you know, a buffer, you can do it from a stream. So whatever you actually need, obviously you could import and, and use, right? But if we actually run this, actually let's, you know what, let's, let's actually define the front end first. So we are going to create a form. The action is going to be that forward slash API slash V1 slash users slash avatar that we just kind of built out. And what we're gonna do is we're going to make the method a post method, right? And because we're using Molter, we're going to add an ink type and it's gonna be multi-part form data. And so we're gonna make sure our input type file is in there. So let's go down to file and the name is going to be avatar. And then our button is going to be type submit and we're just gonna put submit. So again, super simple DOM, we're not gonna style it. We're just gonna kind of use it as is. We're gonna leave the hello world in there just because you know, I love hello world. And so pretty much good, I guess we can change the title, call it you know, ESM, shim, something like that. Uh, but this should be pretty much good. We should be able to run this now, right? But as most of you probably know, and if you're watching this, we're gonna encounter a problem. So we ran npm run dev, it's compiling everything, and then it goes to start the server and we get this error. It's, you know, it's error require ESM. I'm sure you've probably seen it if you're watching this because you probably would have no idea what this video is about if you haven't seen this already and if you weren't actively looking for it, right? So let's go ahead and we're going to pull this up and run it and just kind of see that it obviously doesn't run. That's actually what it's supposed to look like, right? So this actually doesn't run right now and the site can't be reached, obviously because it didn't compile, right? So it's gonna keep trying to load this and it's not gonna be working correctly. So again, not a good thing, not what we want. We're going to go ahead and cancel that and we're going to actually build out how this is supposed to work, right? So let's go ahead and kind of use that ES build package that we had. We're gonna create a new folder in the root of our project called ESM. We're gonna create a new file called index.ts. And this index.ts is essentially going to have one functionality and it's going to be to import what we need and then export it. So we're gonna import from file type and we're just gonna import only the functions and properties that we actually wanna use, right? So we wanna make sure that uh, we keep this bundled file as small as possible. So only import what you need and only export what you need. So we're gonna import the file type from file function and then we're gonna export it. Now obviously we're gonna have a single export. We might have any number of imports. So if you're actually trying to combine two or three ESM modules in here, you could have a laundry list of import statements and then you could have kind of different namespaces that you create with this export that all contain the properties that you need from your imports. So you could definitely do it that way. Since we're only using one file type or one function, we're only gonna be importing this one function or we're gonna be exporting the one function, but we're not gonna be importing the entire library. So again, it's not necessary and I would just suggest only doing what you absolutely need, right? So. We're gonna stick with this. We're gonna go back to our user.ts and instead of import file type from file type, what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna import only the type. So we're importing type file type from file type. This is gonna prevent us from actually importing the object from the module itself. And this will allow us to actually now create and require statement. So we're gonna say const, and it's gonna be file type from file. And it's going to be from a require statement that we do slash ESM slash, we'll just say bundle.js, we'll be creating that. And that's gonna be type of file type that we're actually importing. Now, obviously we're gonna have an error down here because we were using the actual whole object. So we just need to delete that. And now we're just calling the function itself, right? So we're importing the type. We actually have all of the typing still because we can see that we actually have this function. It takes in a path, which is a string, returns a promise of type file type dot file type result. And so we should be able to actually log that type now and we'll see what happens. So we want to be able to run this. We need to actually create this file here now. And so we have our index.ts, but let's go ahead and go back to our package.json and we're going to use the ES build package now. And let's just call, you know, we'll create a new script called depths for dependencies. And we'll say, uh, we're gonna call it ES build and it takes in an argument called platform and that equals node. 
And then we're going to say, we're gonna call it on ESM slash index.ts. And then we want to pass in bundle and we're going to pass in our out file as ESM slash bundle.js. Now, obviously this bundle.js has to match whatever you're importing here, right? So you could call it build.js, you could call it bundle.js, as long as they, these equal, it doesn't matter what you call this, and as long as it's a JS file too, right? So again, we're gonna make sure that we are building this. You wanna also make sure that, you know, maybe your git ignore includes all JS files or it includes just this ESM slash bundle.js file, whatever it is, I wouldn't wanna check this in because it's actually gonna be part of our build. So if you're only ever gonna be importing like this single package from CommonJS and you're not gonna be changing this file very often, then I would suggest just having it like as part of a post install, it runs once, builds that and you're done, right? But for our demo purposes, or if you're going to actually be changing this quite a bit, I'm actually gonna add it as part of our dev strip, dev script, right? So I'm actually going to add it here. It's gonna be npm run depths and TSC watch. If you'd actually, uh, you know, you probably would wanna run it here as well. So you could actually do the npm run depths here and npm run ts and npm run start server. This would be part of the start script, right? But again, we're gonna do it as part of this dev script here as well, just because we would need to, it would probably always need to be part of this start script um, if you're gonna be deploying it somewhere, right? Just because it's part of the build, or a lot of times you'll have an actual build script that would be a part of as well. But we're gonna to wanna to run this first, and then we're gonna run the TS on things and, and everything like that, right? Um, but our TS config is actually not even configured to be compiling things in our ESM folder. Now, I wouldn't suggest you do that, but it wouldn't matter too much even if you did. So uh, again, we're only gonna be importing things from the actual bundle.js here, right? So this is gonna keep everything running correctly. We should be able to run this now without any errors. Let's go ahead, npm run dev. It's going to run that npm run depths. We saw that it was pretty quick. ES build super fast, like it a lot. And bam, we are listening on port 3000 now. Things are working and we can now try and reload this and we can actually see the application like it's supposed to be. Hello world, choose file. Let's go ahead and we're gonna choose you know, a JPEG here, click submit. And we can kind of see here now that we actually do log the type. We have an object with the extension JPG, the MIME image JPEG, right? And so the function itself is working. It was able to bundle all of the code that it needed to actually run this function and we are able to go ahead and submit different types of files. Here's a WebP image. We're gonna go ahead and submit that as well. And you can see we actually run extension WebP. We get the MIME type, image WebP, and things are working. So you're good to go. All right, so I hope that was easy enough to understand and I hope it actually helps. So again, I highly, highly suggest that you just take the time to convert your entire project to use ESM. Uh, if you are trying to use ESM modules, but in the case that you know it's just too much effort and you're only ever gonna use a single package, I think this is the way to go for sure. So again, if you have not hit that subscribe button, hit that subscribe button because we're always putting out content. If you guys have any suggestions or questions, feel free to drop them in the comments below. Check out our merch store and honestly check out our offerings at covalence.io. So until next time, get out of here.